Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to OMLA. OMLA represents for uh, Orlando Math Learning Academy. So you will see our website under the YouTube video or our website is also inside the video. My name is Hoi Nguyen. The reason I'm making this video is that over the past several years, I have realized that there are many students struggling with college algebra that you have to take in the first year of college, right? Of course, there are many reasons for not be able to succeed in this course. Um, some students had to take this course twice or three times. In my opinion, it is because um, both of the time frame and the lack of dedication from students, um, instructor don't have enough time to deliver the lecture in a efficient way, and still student don't really put much effort into the course. Um, therefore, I made my decision to offer you guys a series of lecture video on college algebra course using uh, uh, In college, plus I will work through most of the exercise problem from textbook I will also do some advanced problem which I think useful for students who want to drill the skill in algebraic uh, manipulation uh, re regarding to my background, I have um, a BSME and a master degree of uh, mathematical science from uh, UCF. <laughs> I've been working for a college in Florida. I have lived in Orlando since the first day I set my foot in the US, which is 16 years ago. Uh, so you can totally trust my knowledge. When I say uh, this, it does not mean that as long as you watch my video and you be good at math, you know. Being good at math require your commitment, focus, and she will. <laughs> uh, you cannot tell me that you want to pass the course with A and B and you don't want to spend time on us. Uh, this course demands you to spend at least, in my opinion, I think three hours per day. It depends on what, how much knowledge you know about. Uh, the basic one, okay. The basic one I mean over here is uh, intermediate algebra. And the textbook I'm gonna use for my video and for most of the problem I cover will be this one. I look very familiar, right? I think uh, you could get this book from uh, college uh, in Orlando, and then a lot of instructors use this book also, okay. And the topic I cover, I think, I think I'm gonna cover all of them. Uh, chapter one to chapter seven. So chapter seven is about polynomial and rational function and application. Okay. When you watching this video or when you taking this course, it means that all the knowledge all the material you learn from intermediate algebra uh, you must master it okay for example like you know how to add fraction you know how to subtract multiply divide fraction uh, you know what is mean or by order pair you know the coordinate system and uh, you know the PEMDAS rule of course PEMDAS rule and and you know how to um, um, graph a linear equation by plugging the point um, uh, what does it mean by interval notation something like that so all the basic one uh, even the adding and subtracting uh, positive negative integers I'm not gonna go back and, and explain really deeply into that anymore so I mean you must be able to do it in order to to do college algebra okay so I don't know if you have, guys have any question for me. If you guys don't have any question, then I believe that we can uh, we can get started now. Okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, on the first chapter of this book, on the first chapter of this book, we're talking about 
Uh, we're doing a review. Okay. So review. Sorry. I think I'm gonna leave this one. This one over here. Okay. So just um. Oh. Recall. Or review. So the first concept I want to do the review about will be the PEMDAS one. Okay. PEMDAS. I think I'm gonna fix my camera a little bit. Okay, see this look weird. Uh, okay. PEMDAS. So what does it mean by PEMDAS? PEMDAS represent for um, P is a parenthesis, right? P is parenthesis. E is represent for exponent. M represent for multiplication. And D is division. A is addition. And S is subtraction. Okay. So you, when you want to evaluate an expression, okay. Uh, for example, I give you expression like um, uh, twenty-four plus twenty-four divided by two square. So according to the PEMDAS rule, we have, if you see the parenthesis, that's what we have to do first. Okay, then you do ex exponent. When you do, then you do multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. However, in some case, some problem, if you have only addition and subtraction, then you have to do from left to right. Or if you have only multiplication and division, you also go from left to right. So, if I apply the PEMDAS rule in this case, uh, I have to do exponent first, right? So I'm going to do step by step. So I'm going to just go ahead and rewrite 24 plus 24 plus divided by 2 square. 2 square give you 4 between addition and division. Okay, you have to do division first. You have to do division first, okay? Because division go before addition so it'll be 24 i rewrite it plus 24 divide by 4 give you 6 then i add them up give you 30. okay does it make sense so this concept you already learned in uh, intermediate algebra i just uh, want to go through that so that uh, hopefully the concept uh, all the knowledge come back to you okay another example Four over three minus minus three over five square. So exponent and parenthesis I have to do first, right? So I am gonna just go ahead and rewrite four over three minus what you square a negative number it give you positive number so give you positive 9 over 25 so you see that i'm writing the way i'm writing very carefully you see uh, i put the bar in the middle of the equal sign then i put the minus sign right in the middle of two bar you know i don't put the the minus sign over here i don't put the minus sign over here right in the middle okay I think that's very helpful for you because later when you deal with a very complicated problem and you see a number and variable everywhere and uh, if you don't do it in order then you, know, you don't really organize it then it's very hard for you to see the pattern okay so right now I have two fractions subtracting each other so we need to find this common denominator which in this case is uh, 
75 is least common denominator. So, so it could be 25, 25, 4 times 25, uh, 100 minus 75 divided by 25 is 3, 27. So, 100 minus 27 is uh, 73 over 75. Okay. Example number three. Okay. Now, how about if you have something only addition and subtraction? You see that we always have to do from left to right because if you do uh, addition first, for example, I have like two minus three plus five. Okay. You will see the difference. Uh, why I, you will see the reason why I say that because if you follow the PEMDAS, the order of the PEMDAS. PEMDAS rule over here, it means that you have to do addition first, right? So it means that in this case, you will have uh, uh, 2, 3 plus 8, then 2 minus 8 is 6, minus 6. Okay. However, if you do if you do from left to right, it will give you this is minus 1 plus 5, give you 4. Oh. So you see that you better you better go from left to right, okay? Every time you see uh, addition and subtraction only, or every time you see the division and uh, multiplication only. Okay? Just if you uh, don't go from left to right. Then it's very easy to get wrong. Of course, in this case, you can I can get I can get four. I can get four also if I do the addition first. But I need to do negative three plus five. It's negative three plus five give you two. Two plus two is four. So if you skip the minus. You see that? Then everything will be wrong, right? Then become you just write, you just calculate three plus five e, then two minus a is negative six. The answer is wrong. So if if you have addition and subtraction, or if you have multiplication and division only, okay, I say only, then you should do from left to right. That's what I uh, always recommend. Okay. Another concept I want to review. Another concept I want to review is um, solving linear equation, solving uh, basic linear equation. So I don't know if you remember that uh, uh, when you were in high school, you solved the one-step equation, right? Then you solve the two-step equation. Then you solve them something called multi-step equation. So the, the one-step equation it look like this. Example one, for example, I have uh, uh, x plus two equal five. Okay. Then you want to get the x by itself. You subtract both side by two like that. Okay. Then you have then you cross it out like this. Then you have x equal x minus two equal three. So the goal of so many basic equal linear equation is uh, you need to get you need to isolate the x variable, the variable you want to uh, find. You need to isolate into one side, and every number you need to put it into the other side. Okay, it could be the left side, it could be the right side, but you need to isolate the x variable. So this is called one-step equation. You the this this term uh, you know that when you're in high school, okay. The two-step equation is a little bit different, kind of the same, but then add something more. For example, I have four x uh, minus two equal um, equal. Uh, let me see equal six. For example. 
Then again, you see that the term, the term that 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 contain the x is this term, the four x. Then you need to isolate this term first. Then later, after we isolate the, the term four x, we isolate the x. So in order to isolate the four x, we need to get rid of number two. So in order to get rid of number two, I add them both side by two because this is minus, so I add it by two. Add it by two, it cancel out, right? So the equation become four x equals six plus two is eight. Okay. So that basically that's the first step we have to do in, in, in one step equation, right? But the second step that in this case we need to isolate the x value. The x variable but over here is 4x so we need to get rid of number 4 and I see that over here is multiplication in order to get rid of number 4 I divide by 4 so it gives you 2 so this is called two-step equation two-step servant linear equation I just put two step equation because you have to do two steps right the first step is you need to get rid of the one of the number then the second step we need to get rid of the coefficient okay then the example three in the example I give you something called a multi-step solving equation why I said multi-step because we need to do more than just two Sometimes we have to distribute, sometimes we have to isolate, we add, we subtract, we, we do more than just two steps. For example, I have like um, uh, 2x minus 7, okay, uh, plus 3x equals negative 92, for example. So the trick is that every time you see the parentheses, go ahead and multiply it. Go ahead and distribute uh, the number. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute the number because I see the parentheses here. Distribute, which I fold it. So give you 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14x. I rewrite everything left. So don't rush, okay? Some students, uh, they, they want to go fast and uh, they not good, but they still want to go fast. So after they distribute it, they kind of do a mental math in their brain and the answer turned out to be wrong. So try to do a step by step. You, we don't have to rush, okay? Okay, so after I distribute a number two and I see that two X and three X that's the first step. The second step is you see the 2x and 3x is 5x. I combine like terms. So the, the second step is combining like, like terms. So give you 5x and I keep rewriting. Okay. Again, then you see that the equation over here you obtain a kind of similar to this equation, right? Kind of similar to the example number two. So what I have to do next is I get rid of 14 I get rid of 14 then I have 5x equal a negative 92 plus 14 is uh, 8 um, negative 78 okay then the last step the last step the equation right now we are obtaining kind of look like uh the one or the second step of this example number two right is it that uh in front of the x variable we have a number then on the right side or equal side we have another number so in order to get rid of the five in and 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 to get the x by itself i divide both side by five so I have x equal negative 78 over 5. So this is the final answer. Uh, some students, uh, they, they put this number into calculator and get the, the decimal numbers. Don't do it, okay, because we, we're in college now. Uh, if you see the fraction and uh, if you cannot simplify that, then just, just leave it alone. If you can simplify that, go ahead and simplify it. But if you cannot, just 
don't change two decimal number just leave it like this it's look more professional okay so that is the review review for seven uh, linear equation the third concept I want to do the review is the graphing part and in order to graph uh, a, a function a function uh, you need the coordinate system and you need the order pair right you need the point and the point is uh, uh, the point is written in, in, in order pair form for example I have a point uh, A with coordinate is 2 3 for example in 2 I call the X component right and three, I call it Y component. And we grab any function on the system. It's called X, Y system, or you can call that, um, the, um, this is Y, this is X, this is the origin, or we call it sometimes we call it Cartesian, Cartesian system coordinate. I always call it um, X Y coordinate system. Say it had the same meaning. Okay. For example, I want to grab a point, right? So I just uh, mark uh, over here X component. So I mark one, two here, and I mark three component. Uh, the Y component is three, so I have put one, two, three here. So I have a point, right? This point A like that. That is the way to locate a pawn, or that's the way to grab a pawn. However, if they give you a function, if they give you a function, for example, like they want you, they want you to grab y equal three x plus one. This is called linear function, and it has the form is called uh, y intercept form. We're gonna talk about this uh, on the second video, okay? But on the first video, I don't want to really f um, mention uh, the form of linear equation. You know? So I just give it you the function so that you uh, we kind of know how to uh, do uh, the graphing. We kind of I want to you to review how to graph a function. That's all, okay? So they give you the function like this with x and y. And you don't know, uh, for example, uh, just imagine you don't know how to grab. Okay, you just pretend you don't know how to grab. So the way we grab it is that we're gonna plug in the uh, the point. We're gonna plug in the value in order to get the points. As long as you get the point, you got two points, then you can connect two points and you get the the line, right? Because uh, as long as you have two points, you have a line. And because this is a, a linear function, right? so I know the graph is a line. So you just need to get two points. But what point? Okay, doesn't matter. You can get any point. So I just uh, uh, use point, for example, 1, x equal 1. So I plug 1 into x, give you 4, 1, 4, right? 1, 4. Okay, so one four, so one right here, one two three four, so one point is right this. Okay, and I'm gonna use another point I already use here. It's called two three. Okay. Oh, look like two and three doesn't work. Uh, two. If you plug two in here, two two times three is six six plus two seven. I'm sorry, two seven. So two. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So another point is like this. So I got two points. I can connect them. Okay, and I have a graph. So over here is two seven, and over here is one four. You you can use any point. Okay, you can uh you can use any value uh for the x, and you plug into the the function, and you can get the y. Okay, and you just need to get two points in this graph because this is linear. Okay, and I remember in uh, inter intermediate algebra, all you graph is linear. I think you learn how to graph a quadratic also, but um, uh, 
let's just leave it aside uh, for the time being. Okay? We 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 will talk about that later. Okay. And the last concept, the last concept I want to is one. The last concept I want to do the review is called. Interval notation. What does it mean by interval notation? We use interval notation to express a set of number between two values so interval notation um, to express to express a set of number between between two values and two value over here I call it uh, value A and B and uh, uh, we use the parenthesis and bracket to write interval notation and we have several kind of interval notation we have a uh, close interval notation so the first one is called close interval notation and we write it as bracket a and b the reason that we call it close because uh, it include the n value over it, it in this 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 notation right here it means that we include all the value between a and b and at the end is the value a and b example i have interval notation i have a close interval uh, between uh, one and uh, four so this is mean this is mean that uh, this is a set of all the number between one and four and include one and four so what number between one and four it could be three right or could be uh, 1.5 is also between one and four and if it include one and four it means one is also in this interval in this set okay or a four is also in this interval in this set so it doesn't matter what kind of number it could be decimal number as long as it is between one and four it could be a uh, rational number as long as it's between one and four it could be uh, even irrational number if it's between one and four it doesn't matter okay as long as it's between one and four that's fine and we have another kind of interval notation we call that open interval notation and we have it something like that we use parentheses to represent open interval notation Example, I have 2 and 5 parentheses. What does it mean over here? It means that we include all the value between 2 and 5, but not include 2 and 5 itself. It could be, it could be 3, it could be 2.1, because 2.1 is greater than 2. It could be 4, but it cannot be 2 or nor 5 
because 2 and 5 is not a part of this interval. When I use parentheses, it means that we does not include the n value. Okay. I want you to notice this uh, before I um, continue. So you see that the way we write it over here is kind of very uh, look like the, um, the order pair notation. The order pair notation last time. See? It very look like this one, right? So don't get mistaken between order pair and open interval, okay? Most of the time, for the order pair, they have to name the point. For example, over here, the point, I name it point B. Over here, I name it point C. But sometimes, they don't name it. They just write point 1,4. And many students get mistaken between uh, the point 1,4 and the interval notation so be careful with that okay the points it look like the interval notation but it's it's not okay we also have another kind of interval notation is called half open interval so half open interval it means that we have the interval notation uh, that it close on one end and open uh, at the other end. For example, I have over here interval notation close at A but close open at B. Or I have a, another interval notation like open at A and close at B. And I can give you an example easily. Example, for example, I have like uh, close 3 but open at 5 or I can have open at 3 and close at 6. Okay. So it means that it include all the value between 2 and 5 but we don't include 5. However, we still can include number 2. For example, 2 is also in the set. Or 2.1 is also in the set, but 5 is not inside the set, it's not inside the interval uh, 2 5, uh, bracket 2 5 parentheses. Okay. Another one, another kind of interval notation we call infinite, infinite interval. If you have infinite interval, it means that one end of the interval is infinity. For example, I have um, infinity, uh, a, negative infinity a, or uh, uh, b positive infinity. Okay, and we can use bracket. Uh, or parenthesis for number however can not use bracket on interval side what does it mean what do I mean by that it means that when you write in infinity simple we can not write the, the bracket okay for example, I have I have bracket of negative infinity to three to five. If I write like this, this means draw. This is wrong. Why? Because this if it infinity, how come you can include the value? Uh, if if it infinity, for example, infinity a million, there's something smaller than negative a million. For example, ne uh, negative two million. Or negative 10 million but if I if I use if I take negative 10 million as the the, the the boundary the limit then there's something even smaller than 10 million negative 10 million right for negative billion some for example so we cannot include that because it, it the, the number lies go forever 
it can go down forever it could get smaller forever or can get bigger forever you you cannot include that so we cannot use bracket for the infinity negative infinity or positive infinity we cannot use bracket however i still can use sometimes i i still can use uh bracket for number of course i can use bracket here okay this is mean what it means that all the value less than two but it's also include two because we use a bracket it means that we can include number two but we cannot uh, you see that we, we cannot include infinity negative infinity because we don't know how smaller it is it, it goes it gets smaller uh, forever we, we don't know like a billion negative billion negative trillion we don't know so we cannot include it okay and for all this interval notation I can uh, from from this I can have another way to write the answer uh, that is called um, algebraic notation so as long as you have algebraic notation we have interval notation and vice versa for example uh, interval notation 1 4 include 1 and 4 I can write algebraic notation so, okay I'm gonna use the, the the green color here to write uh, interval notation 1 4 as algebraic notation so if you write interval 1 4 as algebraic you have to use the infi uh, the equal um, the inequality okay so this means that all the value between all the x value between 1 and 4 and include 1 and 4 that's why I put the uh, equal sign right here you see there's a small bar right here and for this I can write it as 2 less than x less than 5 okay for this one I can write as 2 less than a uh, 3 less than x less than equal 6 because 6 included right so I have to use the equal sign so all of this I call the algebraic notation and for this I can write it as uh, negative infinity uh, less than equal x Oh, less than x less than equal to okay all right and another a common mistake I see from student is that um, a lot of student uh, are very confused um confused with the order of the number in the number line for example like um some student uh, write like this some student write uh, three comma negative two this interval they write it like that and i was like okay i mean how come how come three is less than negative two no way right because if you you have to put when you draw it you try to imagine a number line a number line over here I have zero here I have uh, negative two on the left side of zero and I have three here and how come you can write ne three first you have to write negative two first okay so for interval notation you always the way you write you always go from left to right you write the smallest to the biggest you don't write the bigger one first okay so remark remark is always write from the smaller value 
to the bigger the value okay the number line the number line the negative value is on the left side right and the the positive value on the right side we already know the set of all uh, real number we, we learned that in intermediate algebra already and I'm sure that we also talk about uh, you you got taught about it in high school the negative value is always smaller than the the positive value if you write like this you mean the positive value is greater than the negative value it is of the positive uh, uh, value is smaller than negative value it doesn't make sense so this is this is wrong okay so this is a very common mistake and I don't know why this is very basic and a lot of students still get mistake for it okay always write from the smaller value to the bigger value okay so I think that's all the concept I want to uh, the review uh, for today uh, let's do some uh, practice problem then um, we can stop the lecture then next time we can do something else okay practice okay i'm gonna pick something interesting but i don't think it's too bad very easy i try to solve all the problem for you guys okay so don't worry <coughs> number one Number one. Negative eight plus seven times three square. I want to evaluate this. Okay. I want to evaluate this and of course I have to use PEMDAS rule, right? So the PEMDAS rule is parentheses go first. So look, I'm going to do just step by step. I see over here the parentheses, uh, uh, the exponent, I'm sorry. The exponent go first. So I'm going to do the exponent first. And I'm going to just go ahead and ignore the rest of it. What does it mean by ignoring? Like I'm just go ahead and rewrite it. Okay. And multiply. So I expand this. 3 squared is 9. All right. And I see the multiplication here. So multiplication go first. I ignore the negative eight. Sixty-three. So sixty-three minus eight is fifty-five. Okay, positive fifty-five. Okay, because sixty-three is greater eight, greater than eight. So we have to use the sign of the bigger number. I don't want to uh, reveal this anymore. You're supposed to know this, so okay. The two four minus six squared divided by two minus five. Okay. Again, I see the exponent just rewrite the order see I expand the exponent then I see division and subtraction only so between the division and subtraction you have to do division first PEMDAS rule PEMDAS so division go first so the 4 minus 36 divided by 2 is 18 okay See, I write it very carefully, guys. I just I do step by step. I don't really rush. Now I see only a addition, a uh, subtraction, right? I always do from left to right. So four minus eighteen is negative fourteen minus five, negative nineteen. Some students say that, uh, or uh, some student ask me, that, can we do over here? Well, we can, but you must be very careful because the negative side over here will kill you. That's why I recommend you always do from left to right. Every time you see only addition and subtraction, always do from left to right. Okay. Number three. 
4 minus 2 bracket 1 minus 5 minus 8 square oh and this problem they add the bracket in the parenthesis okay then according to do we have to do parenthesis first right it means parenthesis in this case also the bracket but oh, we see the, over here the parenthesis inside the bracket so we have to do the parenthesis which is we have to do inside the bracket first okay inside the bracket I mean I rewrite it minus 3 okay that I do something inside here bracket go first so 4 minus 2 give you negative time negative be positive 1 or you can you can convert to negative like that become positive so 1 plus 4 uh, 1 plus 3 is 4 okay then I expand exponent give you 4 square 16 then I do multiplication first 32 then give you negative 28 So I have a kind of fraction over here. A fraction is division. Okay, so uh, and if you see addition and subtraction and division, you always do addition and subtraction uh, later, right? However, uh, every time you see a fraction, we're gonna do this is the trick, okay? Every time you see a fraction, you you try to do the top, the numerator. So the numerator in this case is six plus three times six. Everything is on the top here is a numerator. Everything down here is a denominator. Okay, so I look at the numerator. I see that I have the multiplication sign and the addition sign. So I have to do multiplication first. Okay, because PEMDAS rule multiplication will go before addition. Okay, so I become 6 plus 18. And if you look at the denominator, parentheses go first. So it becomes 2, 1 minus 3, negative 2. Okay. So on the top we have 6 plus 18 is 24. At the bottom I have 2 times negative 2, negative 4. So 24 divided by 4, negative 6, because positive divided by negative is negative. So remember, if you see the fraction, do the numerator then the denominator and divide each other okay number five solving equation I want to solve negative 3 over 2x equal 4, 7. Too easy. So I want to get x by 7 and I see that in front of the x I have the, um, a fraction negative 3 over 2. So I need to get uh, negative 3 over 2. So there are two ways. To uh to get this problem done, the first way you just go ahead and divide both sides by negative three over two. Okay, then everything cancel out, right? The second way that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get rid of number two first, and number two is at the denominator. So I need to get rid of number two. I multiply both sides by two. Okay, 2 times 4 over here is times 2 is 2 times 1, 2 times 4 is 4, 8, 7 times 1 is 7. Then you see that I divide both sides by negative 3. Okay, when you divide two fractions, what do you do? 
keep chain flip keep change negative 3 over 1 become 1 over negative 3 1 over negative 3 is same as negative 1 over 3 so this gave give you negative 8 over 21 okay and you're done you cannot do anything else that's all cannot simplify or anything second ax minus one fifth equal three hopefully you can follow so I want to get it isolate the x term I need to isolate I need to get rid of the negative one fifth by adding both sides by one fifth and over here we have three plus one fifth is 16 over five okay then x equal e x equals 16 over five and I divide both side by eight right that I have keep chain flip 16 over 40 and 16 over 40 I see that I can simplify so give you 410 and this is 2 5 okay. most of the time I'm not doing like that most of the time that I'm not gonna do the step like adding both sides or subtract both sides and cancel out like this is very uh, to me is this is it's not really professional however because I want to do step by step for you uh, because you guys uh, not get used to uh, getting used to it yet so I want to you guys to do like that so that you guys remember the step but I mean if you uh, become good then you don't need to do like this you uh, you could be like okay ax equal to negative one fifth equal three you add both side by three three plus one fifth is sixteen over five i can jump from here to here without doing like that without doing this i can jump from here to here and i can jump from here to here easily okay if you're good you can jump really fast but because right now uh, this is a review session so i want to do step by step for you so that you guys understand okay Eight seven okay so you see that in this equation we have the left side the left side is x and the right side also have a term with x so our goal our goal is we need to combine all the term with x together but if it's on each side of the equation, we cannot combine. So we need to move all the term with x into one side. So we see that we have two term with x. This term and this term. Right? Two term with x. So I need to I need to isolate them. I need to I I need to bring all Together on one side, or the term with x on one side, it means that I need to subtract 5 over 6x, both sides. Because I need to move this over here. I need to move 5 over 6x to the left side. And some students ask me, that, can, can they move uh, 1 half x to the right side? Oh, yes, you can. But most of the time I recommend that you should have the term with x on the left side okay you see that in this equation I have the term with x on the left side and this equation I have the term with x also on the left side all the time okay so I want to have the term with x on the left side I mean everything every term with x on the right side is gone okay so I have one x one half x minus 5 6 x plus 3 4 equal negative 2 so I have a term with x I have a term with x over here I can combine a term okay 
And this is a fraction, so we can combine fraction by uh, finding the least common denominator. In this case, the least common denominator is 6. So let me do a mental math over here. I will have 6 at the bottom, negative 2 at the top x. Okay, hopefully you know how to add and subtract fraction in this case, so I don't have to go through that. That's just too basic. <laughs> Okay, and again over here, I'm going to subtract both sides by 3, 4. Same thing as this, right? Because I, I see the term with x in this guy, so I need to isolate this term. So negative 2 over 6 is give you 1 third. Simplify that. Now I can combine a fraction over here. Give you 4. Uh, negative 11 okay. now I have uh, negative 1 over 3x equal negative 11 over 4 okay so I need to get the need to get rid of the 3 in order to get the x by itself right so I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 because 3 is a denominator so I have to multiply both sides by 3. So if I multiply both sides by 3, I have negative 33 over 4. Okay, and I need to get rid of the negative sign, so I just go ahead and divide both sides by negative 1. So it give you 33 over 4. Okay, and you're done here. So sum up the step over here, I do a mental math, uh, add and subtract fraction, divide fraction, multiply fraction, so I expect that you guys um, can do it. Um, you can do it on the side, you can do it on your brain, but I mean, uh, I'm not going to do that anymore because it's college algebra. Okay, if you, uh, if you don't feel confident adding subtracting uh, fraction, please review that for yourself. Okay, that's its elementary level. We, we, we in college algebra. Uh, and I, I'm sure that you already learned an intermediate algebra, so uh, there's no way that uh, I will reveal that for you. Okay, and 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 I I recommend that if you take this course and you don't know how to add fractions, to multiply, divide fraction, please, I mean, don't don't take it. It's just go ahead and review and learn how to add fraction first before we can keep going before you take in this course okay number eight all right I need to solve for n all right how many solve for n so this is the first equation we solve here with the uh, parentheses, right? And uh, I said every time we see the parentheses, I'm going to apply the distribution property. I'm going to just go ahead and multiply them in. Negative 5n, negative times negative 6, plus 5n, equal negative 2, minus 8n. So I do very carefully. You see that I, for each step, I rewrite the rest of them. I do one step, I rewrite. I do one step, I rewrite. I don't rush. I don't really rush. So next step is I have to combine like terms. So as you see that on the left side, everything gone here. So I rewrite it. Okay. Now these the difference I see uh, from uh, from the uh, from the previous problem is that uh, over here the variable on the right side is not on the left side anymore. And as I told you, I recommend this is always it should be on the on the right on the left side. That's just my recommendation, but it does not mean that I couldn't do anything if we have variable on the right side because I told you that we can isolate all the now we have a problem with variable term on the right side. That's fine. So need that we need to get negative two. I add both side by two, give you eight. Okay. Then I divide both sides by negative eight. Give you negative one. Or n equal negative one. And you're done.
Okay. So don't panic. Don't panic if you have variable on the right side. That's fine. You just uh, follow the rule. The rule is that the rule is that you need to isolate by itself. And now the variable on the right side it means the order number you must switch to the left side. See, I switch number two to the left side, which is to give you eight. Okay, I, I basically I, I kind of skip that step, you know. But I hope that you you can see that. Number nine. Number nine, they want you to complete the table that satisfy satisfies the given equation and grab the equation by hand. So they give you the equation like this. And they want you to complete the table. And the table look like this. Okay. When you complete the table, this kind of this this is like plug-in value. You plug in the negative one to the equation. You plug in negative point five to the equation. You plug in zero. If you plug in zero, give you half, right? You plug in negative 1, negative 1 times negative 5 is 5, 5 plus half is 11 over 2. Okay. If you plug in um, negative 0.5, negative 0.5 times negative 5 positive, so uh, 0 0.5 is, uh, 0 .5 is 1 over 2, so 5 times 1 over 2 is 5 over 2, 5 over 2 plus 1 over 2 is 6 over 2, 6 over 2 is 3. And over here you plug 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is times negative 5 is negative uh, 5 over 2 because 0 0.5 is a half, 5 times a half is 5 over 2, negative 5 over 2 plus 1 over 2, negative 4 over 2, negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. Okay, number 10. Ah. Number 10 is a little bit different because you see that if you compare number 10 to number 11, uh, 9, 9 is on 9 you have y by itself already. But on 10, y is not by itself. So we need to do a couple steps before we can fill out this table. They also give you this table. So the step I'm doing here we call the call the solving for literal variables or we solve a literal equation one of the concepts we learn in, um, in pre-algebra or algebra one when you're in high school we need to solve for y so it means that we need to get rid of the 4x <laughs> okay then you divide by 6 so you have y equal 12 minus 4x divided by 6. Okay, now you start plugging in the value and it gives you the y value. Right? Number 11, 12, and 13. They want you to grab equation using calculator and the calculator I'm using is this one so this is the step of graphing the linear equation using number 11 they want you to wrap y equal negative so negative right here negative right here negative 3x plus uh, plus 8 over 9 okay you can grab it you see and it give you a line easily and for number 12 
Number 12, uh, we need to do a couple steps before graphing. Number 12, they give you x minus 2.5 y equal 4.3. We need to solve for y before we can graph because you need to bring all the equation into this form. Into this form. Okay, so let's see how we do this. Okay, I switch x on the right side. Then I divide both sides by negative 2.5. There you go. Then this one I can split up into okay. And this one will give you negative divided by negative is positive. Positive I divide by negative is negative. So 4.3 divided by 2.5 1.72 and 1 divided by 2.5 0.4 so you see here that I can plug this equation into the calculator then yeah you can grab it easily number 30 Number 13 is also a little bit different. Number 13, they give you x minus y equals 0. It's still not in the form yet. So, again, I need to get the y bad cell. So, in order to get the y bad cell, I just move the y. So, you have x equal y. So, x equal y, this function this graph this line is very special if you put it into calculator it gives you something like that okay and this angle will be exactly 45 degree Number 14, and they want you uh, to check if there's something wrong with the calculation. Uh, number 15 is using calculator. I already show you how to do it. Number 14, number 14 give you something like this. They want you to check if it turned out to be zero or not. Okay, so basically this is a PEMDAS rule. In PEMDAS rule, we have to apply the rule. Parenthesis go first. Term right here. Two. Multiplication search four minus four. Four minus four zero equals six. Because 3 times 0 is 0, 6 minus 0, divide by 2, 6 minus 0 is 6, divide by 2, 3. So, the book said that it turned out to be 0, and the answer is turned out to be 3. So, the book wrong. What we have is 3. 3 is correct one. Okay? That is number 14. <coughs> 15 is graphing, so I'm not doing that. You can do it yourself. I already show you how to graph using um, this calculator. You go to uh, the y here, okay, and you just plug in the equation. 16. <laughs> 16, they want to, um, they want you to 
use the interval notation to write the following set of number so they give you the set 0x less than 9 so this is mean what it means all the value between 0 and 9 included 9 that's what it means so all the value between 0 and 9 and we use interval notation you see that we have no equal sign here so we're going to use parenthesis 9 bracket because we have equal sign x greater than 4.5 x greater than 4.5 it means everything to the right side of 4.5 including 4.5 because in this guy I have equal sign so including 4.5 and positive infinity is greater than 4.5 if you imagine the the number line in your brain you will see that right okay seven greater than x greater than one mm. seven greater than one yes makes sense right x greater than one so it means that all the x value greater than 1 but 7 greater than x it means x is less than 7 so this is have, have the same meaning as 1 less equal x less than 7 and this will become 1 bracket 7 parentheses we got an equal sign here is like this D bracket bracket to give you interval notation and they want you to describe they want you to describe it using um, algebraic notation it means we're using the inequality so they give you something like this between negative 3.3 and 6.1 and we change it to algebraic notation which is negative 3.3 less than x less than 6.1 right because we're not including the negative 3.3 because parenthesis and you can do the same for B, D, C, and C. Uh, 18. I tend to give you something like that. And they draw the number line. And over here they use, they draw negative 4 with the dot sign to 4.5 with the circle so if it has a dot sign I mean we use bracket and if we have the circle we use parenthesis so they want to describe this number line using the interval notation okay I want to show you here and for this one you see that it between uh, negative infinity to 3.5 right and 3.5 parentheses okay so you see the arrow go to the left mean negative infinity it never stop because I have an arrow okay number 19 is easy I using a uh, calculator 20 using calculator also so the, you just need to plug in the uh, the equation and as long as you plug in the equation you hit table table right here you see second table then it give you all the value here all right so basically i already solved all the problem for you in the first section of chapter one which is the review uh, section um 
on the second video I'm gonna talk about uh, a linear equation the intercept form of linear equation okay then we will be um, Le we'll be learning how to grab linear equation uh, using something called uh, the slope, the rise over the run method. Okay, so I think that's all for the lecture today. Uh, if you like the video, and uh, if you really want me to um, help you with any math concept, don't hesitate, uh, give me the question under the YouTube video and please subscribe the video uh, subscribe the channel so that I have my motivation to uh, do more video in the future to have you guys thank you so much